Problem number three, huh? This is not an easy problem. It is the problem which almost got me to not be here today. I remember when I first took this course, um, yeah, watching the videos is fun. Finger exercises, yeah, they're pretty tricky. Problems one and two, okay, you can do something. But problem three, it's like, ah, oh, man, why did I sign up for this? And that's okay. Uh, in my case, I had this intricate, this baroque facade of indices, trying to keep track of that longest substring, assuming you've already read the problem. If you haven't, go do that. I had I's and J's and K's. I had X's and Y's, maybe even Z's, that were trying to hold up this weird system that I had designed through my own logic based on what I had learned up to that point. And a lot of the code I'm getting from people to take a look at is much like that. So I think there's something very human about watching these um, videos. If you don't have experience, you watch them, and then you try to code it with your way of doing it. And all I've got to say is, it is not as hard as you think it is. This problem, um, my solution is nine lines long, maybe 10, depending how you declare something. It's not that hard. And that's only using things we've seen so far in this course. Basically, um, don't overthink it. And it's very, very similar to problems one and two, especially problem two that's gone before, that's come before it. I'm assuming you've completed those. If you haven't done that, go do that too. Okay, so let's take a look at what problem three is actually asking us. Okay, we've got uh, assume a string, of, S is a string of lowercase characters, same as before. Write a program that prints the longest substring of S in which the letters occur in alphabetical order. For example, we have an S is equal to, or gets this, and then the program should print something bigger. Okay, so again, this is virtually the same, except now, instead of, as in problem two, looking for the bobs, or in problem one, looking for a vowel, now we're just looking for the longest substring. And the key point here is that, as I mentioned in previous walkthroughs, and as Professor Crimson mentioned in lecture, that you can actually order or compare the order of strings. Should I try to say lexicographic again? Yeah, I think I got it that time. Lexicographic order, alphabetical order of strings. You can do that. And that's really the, the key insight into um, how to solve this problem. So let's go to Python very quickly and do a very quick recap of that. Let's say we've got a string B. Is that greater than string A? Yes, it is. Okay, and we can go the other way here. String C, is that less than string D? Yes, it is. Let's say a string, excuse me, string C, is that equal to, excuse me, remember equal to is not a single equal, but rather double. Yeah, that's true too. So you can do this alphabetical ordering in Python. Those are the commands. That is the absolute key thing you need to know for problem set three, excuse me, for problem number three and problem set one. Some other things that we have to think of, um, how do you do the counter in this case? How do you count that longest string? Um, let's go over to the other side here and let's say S is, oh, what do we want to go for here? Um, oh, actually, let's use the, uh, the example string that they give us here, right here. Okay. Okay, that will be S. And then, um, well, first, let's just try to print out every character in S for um, char, for anything you could type here, right? For letter, let's do that. For letter in S, then print letter. So what are we going to get here? We should get a list of all of these different letters, right? And let's say, um, I'm not looking for the longest substring here, but just to, to illustrate the point of being able to iterate over a string and to see into it and to keep a record of what you've seen. Let's say we want to keep track of only the A, B, C's that appear in the string. How would you go about doing that? Okay, well, pretty much here, you've got four letter in S. That means you're iterating over the whole string. Um, if letter is equal to A, or letter is equal to B, or letter is equal to C. That's one way of doing it. Another maybe nicer way of doing that is to say letter in A, B, C. Then let's, let's do this. Let's add that on. Uh, you know what we'll do? First, let's do it like this. Let me tab this over and it'll just print out only those, right? 
So print that out, A, C, B, 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 A. So those are just the A's, C's, and B's that appear in here. But instead of that, let's make up a new string. Let's call it temp. And you know what? Let me initialize it up here first. Temp is just going to be an empty string. Of course, single and double quote marks, uh, either one's fine in these cases. Um, and let's let's do this. Like if, if that letter happened to be an A, a B, or a C, let's concatenate it onto this temporary string that we have. Um, and then just that would get letter. Okay, and then here, let's print out temp. Okay, there we go. And you see temp through time is getting built up. It's keying these things added onto it. So the leap in logic going from this situation to one in which you're counting the longest substrings is perhaps not as great as you might have been thinking. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to um, keep track of what is the longest substring you've seen so far. Um, my one piece of advice is that you don't have to put all the burden in counting or in keeping track onto a single variable. Do what you will with that um, piece of advice. One more thing, though, I, I think I should mention here is that this loop that we have, um, the one that I've just written here for letter and S, this is going to be returning, well, directly the letters themselves. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say, like in problem number two, you might want to have um, for letter in range, excuse me, um, or some something. You don't have to say letter. You could say I, perhaps, some sort of index for range, uh, how long is this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So range 14, print i. What is that going to give me? 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 13, which is, of course, the 14th item in a range. Now, of course, this range that you might be using, oh, and the key point here is that you'll be getting integers out, and that's something you'll need for your loops but you probably knew that already. The key thing here is that this range is going to be a little bit tricky for this problem. Um, obviously, it's got to be arbitrary and based on how long s is, so the length of s. You've already seen ways of finding length of strings, right? You know, for example, if we had s is, uh, what was that value right here? This one, we could do l and s, and then we get an output of 15. Oh, I should have had, I miscounted here. This should have been 15, sorry. Let's do that one more time. OK, so yeah, the length of s in this case is actually 15. But that arbitrary length, you're going to have to code that in so that it can take in any length of s, any reasonable length of s. But the problem you might face, and you probably definitely will face, uh, unless you design it properly right off the bat, is something like this. Let's say, OK, what is the 15th, or well, what's the 0th element of this one? OK, if I do s 0. Um, I do that index, then I get A. If I do S, I want to know the 14th. That's the last element. That's going to be an L. All right. OK, but let's say I make a mistake here and I look for the 15th. What's that going to give me? Many of you will have already been seeing this error, the string index out of range. So my piece of advice here is that when you're looking for the range of something, um, in this problem, often you're looking at one character and then the following character, and you're doing some sort of comparison based on that, the alphabetical order con comparison. If you go over, you're going to get this output, this 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 error. So you don't really have to go to the um, full n there. I don't want to say more than that. Basically, you got to think about how you're going to treat this range and what you might be able to put in here to keep it from going too far past um, with some of your um, conditional statements. Okay, so I think I've said enough. Um, this is problem number three in PSET 1. Um, once you make it past this, you'll have um, some little badge on your uh, lapel or your chest or something that will hopefully help you get through the even harder problems that will be coming your way in this wonderful, wonderful course. See you later. Bye-bye.